This is a Zygon audio presentation of The Way of the Mind Warrior by Dane Spots. A little over 20 years ago, I wrote a book called Super Brain Power, which was about Zygon and the tools that we created to shift consciousness and create a new mind. The key chapter in my book, Chapter 7, is titled The Way of a Mind Warrior, which is about the point of why, as a human, you would even be interested in mind development, other than the obvious benefits of increasing intelligence, intuition, and mental clarity. In this special workshop, I'd like to read and discuss that chapter of my book with you now, and vector off on some of the salient points, and discuss what it means from a big-picture perspective. The goal is to see how it all comes together and also provide some underlying context for the motivation of doing all this work on yourself. Let me begin with a quote from Immanuel Kant. The greatest human quest is to know what one must do in order to become a human being. What does this mean, to become a human being? Well, I think it's about understanding our role in the universe as a connected self-aware consciousness, that we're all more than our physical bodies, and the path we're on is more, much more, than just consuming and producing things. What is the more? Well, that's what we must discover. Currently, it's the year 2021. I wrote the following in 1996. As the new millennium unfolds, it prevents incredible challenges and opportunities. Science will unlock the genetic code, and all disease will be curable. Computers will connect everyone, everywhere, providing instant access to everything. Free energy will be perfected. People will travel the world in minutes. We will colonize space, journey to Mars, and other planets. These things are within our reach now. Yet the mastery of genetics, atomics, and space travel are only side trips when compared to the main human journey. Science and technology have become the gods of Western society, the external world and its physical rewards the primary focus of our attention. In the next millennium, this will shift, and I predict so will the direction of the human adventure. The biggest and most important discoveries will come not from the external world, but from the journey within ourselves. Advances in science and technology will be marvelous and far-reaching, but not as profound as the realizations that lie dormant, hidden within us all. My prediction for the new millennium are mental telepathy, clairvoyance, psychic healing, remote viewing, and other extrasensory perception abilities will not only be accepted and commonplace, but taught and developed in schools. Devices will be invented that will amplify our psychic powers. We will use the frequencies of sound and light to heal our mind and body and manipulate matter. Brain research will advance to a completely new level and reveal far-reaching secrets about the true nature of our minds. And my boldest prediction? The mind warriors who pursue the development of their inner potential will evolve consciousness at an ever-accelerated rate increasing their mind power, and leading the human race to a new era of enlightened awareness. The third millennium will become the millennium of mind. The beginning is near. Mind is the true undiscovered country. The evolution of the human brain was completed some 50,000 years ago, and although its physical architecture has remained virtually the same, its untapped potential lays dormant, waiting to be awakened. Once we unlock its secrets, the destiny of mankind will be forever changed. Let me take a moment and give you a glimpse of what I think that is and your important role in it. The human brain is made up of three brains, actually. A brain stem, often called the reptilian brain, which deals with involuntary responses, Surrounding this is the limbic system, or the midbrain, as it's sometimes called, involved with expression and emotional experience. The outer part, the neocortex, is used for thinking, 
which as humans developed, grew and expanded at a phenomenal rate unprecedented in evolutionary history. The three brains within our brain are all linked and perform in a synergistic way. The current scientific view on how the brain functions is through hierarchically organized and interconnected neural networks. This is essentially the biocomputer model. Some scientists, however, believe much more is going on than the mere storage and retrieval of functions of a sophisticated computer. We now know that memory is distributed over the whole cortex in much the same way a hologram functions. Brain waves, as we discussed, also play a significant role as they relate to states of consciousness, and especially altered states. The exploration of these states through meditation, biofeedback, and Zygon-like tools seems to bring about an extraordinary acceleration in psychological information processing, as well as psychic phenomena and peak experiences. These brainwave states also seem to shift one's personal space-time experience. Why and how? Mystics talk of the altered state's experience as the eternal moment, a sense of timelessness. As D.T. Suzuki said in Essence of Buddhism, in this spiritual world there are no time divisions, as the past, present, and future, for they have contracted themselves into a single moment of the present, where the life quivers in its true sense. The past and the future are both rolled up in this present moment of illumination. And this present moment is not something standing still with all its contents, for it ceaselessly moves on. These kinds of statements by mystics are difficult to understand for those that have not had such an experience. Let me present you with a theoretical model for what might be going on inside the brain, which I believe science is on the precipice of discovering and will be the opening of a new era in mind development. Your brain is really a space-time machine. It's now well established that in certain altered states experiences, especially prolonged meditations, there's a profound shift in brainwave rhythms associated with peak experiences, those moments of illumination where the experience plugs you into that eternal moment. It connects you with the universe. What's not really understood is how this process works and what it means. Here's one hypothesis. The brain and its internal substructures give off magnetic fields of energy. Although these energy fields are very subtle, it's possible with sophisticated equipment to detect and measure them. One of these instruments is called a squid. It's a helmet sensor device that maps the brain's energy, specifically tuned to detect magnetic fields in the ultra-low frequency range. Using a computer, these energy fields can be mapped and plotted on a graph. One scientist reported hooking himself up to a squid helmet sensor while in an altered state's experience. Focusing this sensitive instrument on the midbrain region where the thalamus pituitary pineal glands reside, the geometry of this magnetic field when plotted on a three-dimensional graph had the same shape and appearance of an Einstein-Rosen space-time bridge. What's an Einstein-Rosen space-time bridge? It's a wormhole. Yes, a funny sausage-shaped structure that's able to tunnel its way through space-time. A cosmic wormhole is a gravitational field that warps time-space, connecting two parallel universes or distant parts of the same universe. It derived its name from the shortcut a worm takes by boring through an apple rather than crawling across it. I'll admit, a cosmic space-time bridge formed within our brains, even one only a few centimeters long, is a pretty far-out idea. But if it turns out to be accurate, it answers a lot of questions and provides a biophysical basis for mystical states and psychic phenomena. The human brain emits energy fields that resemble structures and processes found in the cosmos. 
if this model is a correct representation of what's going on inside our heads, it could be speculated that such a system would also act in much the same way as a universe. In other words, the brain isn't just a hierarchy of neural networks processing and storing sensory input. It may also function as a biological space-time energy transducer, a mini-universe within the universe. The implications are literally astronomical. The ancient Chinese have always believed that this was the case, that the Tao, the universe, was in our head. According to Capra in the Tao of Physics, the Eastern sages, too, talk about an extension of their experience of the world in higher states of consciousness. And they affirm that these states involve a radically different experience of space-time. They emphasize not only that they go beyond ordinary three-dimensional space and meditation, but also, and even more forcefully, that the ordinary awareness of time is transcended. Instead of a linear succession of instants, they experience, so they say, an infinite, timeless, and yet dynamic present. He goes on to state, In space-time, everything which for each of us constitutes the past, the present, and the future is given in block. Each observer, as his time passes, discovers, so to speak, new slices of space-time which appear to him as successive aspects of the material world. So in reality, the ensemble of events constituting space-time exist prior to his knowledge of them. Meditation, according to the mystics, allows us to transcend the space-time experience and enter into a fourth dimension, where space and time are integrated into a whole, where all events are interconnected. Space-time becomes unified in a four-dimensional continuum where there is no before or after and so there can be no cause and effect relationships. It is only in our lower dimensions of reality that we experience a temporal sequence of events moving through time in a linear succession of cause and effect moments. Perhaps a mechanism in our mind-brain entraps us into this denser reality construct in much the same way as physical forces in the universe operate to entrap in a closed space. Through meditation and altered states experiences, we're somehow able to manipulate our consciousness and shift this energy field, escaping the world of cause and effect. A quick side note here about the enlightened mind. The secret of enlightened human beings, such as Jesus or Buddha, was their ability to manipulate the energy of consciousness and coexist in both realms. A mind that is less evolved has simply not learned the way to use its consciousness to turn off the reality distortion field that surrounds them, creating the three-dimensional experience of time and space. The idea that we live in illusion has been a central thesis of mystics and sages long before the so-called New Age movement picked up the banner. But illusion is a wrong term because it implies that your experiences aren't real. Life really is happening to you. It's not an illusion. However, your experience of cause and effect events are real only within this entrapped three-dimensional reality construct. Perhaps a better way of understanding this idea is to see your reality not so much as an illusion, but rather a distortion, a space-time reality distortion. As long as you remain within the energy grid of your space-time distortion, you'll experience time as you do now, and the succession of cause and effect events that define your reality. Learning how to transcend this reality construct is the objective. To evolve and coexist in both dimensions, as Jesus and Buddha were able to do. The only way to do that is by manipulating the energy of your mind. Consciousness is the connecting bridge between these universes. The fifth force. A major quest of science, physics in particular, has been to find a unified field theory, a force that connects the primary four forces of the universe, which are gravity, magnetism, weak nuclear force, and strong nuclear force. It's actually the holy grail of physics, 
to find that fifth force in the universe, the theory that connects all the other forces to explain how the universe operates. To understand precisely why the same particle can exist simultaneously in two different places at the same time. Or even stranger are the questions dealing with how the mind is able to influence the outcome of quantum events. Einstein spent most of his later life unsuccessfully searching for the unified field theory. Physicists have many partial theories that take into account some of the strange ways the universe seems to operate. However, they're still unable to discover the ultimate theory of the universe. Perhaps it's because the answer lies outside the boundaries of science, beyond what mathematics can quantify. The fifth force may be consciousness itself. The universe is mind, and the mind is a universe. As Marilyn Ferguson explains it in The Aquarian Conspiracy, in a nutshell, the holographic super theory states that our brains mathematically construct hard reality by interpreting frequencies from a dimension transcending time and space. The brain is a hologram, interpreting a holographic universe. We are indeed participants in reality, observers who affect what we observe. In this framework, psychic phenomena are only byproducts of the simultaneous everywhere matrix. Individual brains are bits of the greater hologram. They have access under certain circumstances to all the information in the total cybernetic system. Synchronicity, the web of coincidence that seems to have some higher purpose or connectedness, also fits in with the holographic model. Such meaningful coincidences derive from the purposeful, patterned, organizing nature of the matrix. Why prayer and visualization really do work? This model may explain why images visualized in prayer or through transcendental mind states can influence reality and affect what we visualize. Perhaps the brain's space-time bridge opens a channel where the vision transcends your distortion reality construct. The vibrational patterns of the image established in mind interact within the matrix of energy patterns in the universe. This vision creates a kind of interference pattern that becomes aligned and converges within the universe's web of probability patterns. As science has come to learn, the mind interacts with matter at its most primary level where in the quantum world inside atoms, matter exists only in terms of probabilities. In this quantum world, it seems consciousness really does play a role in creation and the way the universe gets experienced. The 16th century philosophers who believed the human mind was divine and contained all the secrets of heaven may have been very close to a universal truth. How do you access and turn on or off the space-time machine inside your head. Certain altered states experiences, such as deep meditative trance states that we've been talking about, reorganize the energy fields in your brain, opening your own personal wormhole into the universe, as it were. Once you've opened this window, you're now in contact with a new realm of possibilities, a boundless, timeless, ever-changing universe of probabilities, where the past, present, and future do not exist. You've tapped into the infinite, the source of everything, where all that has ever happened or ever will happen occupy the same space. William Blake, an English poet who experienced such visions as a child, went on to produce a body of work to describe it. He wrote this, To see the world in a grain of sand, in a heaven in a wildflower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand, an eternity in an hour. The path of a human being. During the early 80s, while I was floating, meditating, and experimenting with altered states experiences, I was actively seeking answers to life's biggest questions. To me, the ultimate question was, what is the purpose of the universe? It became my own private koan. To me, finding a suitable answer to this question was the key to it all. I'd meditate for hours and days at a time on this single question. 
There were moments when I felt I could almost grasp it, and then I would forget everything the next day. To me, though, this was the big philosophical question. I believe that if I could know the answer, that it would open a door of understanding and everything would fall into place. For several years while I was experimenting with psychotechnologies, floating, reading, and doing seminars to improve my mind, this question was my focus. What is the purpose of the universe? It kept rolling over and over in my head. One summer evening in July, I was out for a walk in the park and came across a Little League game in progress. It was a perfect evening. The sun was just setting. The smell of freshly cut grass floated along a gentle breeze. The kid at bat had just connected with the pitch and hit a long pop fly out into the middle of the field. He then began running the bases while his supporters were cheering him on. As he rounded third base, the pitcher scooped up the ball from an outfield pass and tossed it to the catcher who tagged him out and as he slid into home. The very moment I heard a voice inside my head say, the purpose of the universe is to be. It was a sudden flash of insight. That was it. The big answer I was searching for, but it wasn't what I expected. The vision that flowed into my mind seemed too simple to be right. It took me some time afterward to a assimilate and understand its greater meaning. My metaphor for the way the universe operated became the baseball game I was watching. A field with agreed two dimensions and rules and players who interact with each other. You have witnesses, the parents, who cheer and coach the players. At the end of the game, everyone leaves the field and they come back in the future to play it out over again. Each game is totally unique with its own nuances and outcomes, although the process for playing it is the same. The game has no real purpose other than the joyful experience of playing it. In my vision, I saw the universe playing out in a similar scenario. The key players, matter and energy, acting in this fluid and ever-changing interplay of creation and destruction. Consciousness is not only a spectator in the stands witnessing the game unfold, but it's also a coach and referee imposing rules, manipulating events, and influencing the outcome. Matter, energy, and consciousness, all dynamically interwoven, interacting and influencing each other to create a matrix of existence, the purpose of which is to simply exist and play the game. Existence becomes its own purpose, the result of the experience of being. For me, this idea was a flashpoint, the perfect solution. It was a high point in my life. I wanted an answer, and it found me, a conceptual map to frame it all in. This was my beginning. Over the next six months, I fleshed out my metaphor and began keeping a journal, jotting down notes and fleeting thoughts, so I'd be certain not to lose it. Although they're personal, to make my next point, I'll share some of my notes with you. Here they are. If I were God, the best universe I could possibly imagine would be one in which existence is filled with infinite possibilities. I would design a matrix where everything that could exist, did exist, does exist, for the purpose of experiencing being. The matrix would be an open system with a creative dynamic that combines energy and matter in an ever-increasing, complex array of forms, where all potentials exist at once, where every permutation of existence could be played out. The point of this universe is to experience existence and creation in all its forms. Another thing I wrote, matter is not solid. The structure of atoms are like miniature solar systems made up mostly of empty space. If an atom were the size of the Houston Astrodome, its nucleus would be smaller than a grain of sand. The electrons whirling around the edges of the dome would be the size of dust particles. Matter is mostly empty space. If I were God and wanted to experience existence and creation, the place I'd most want to be is at the center of it all, the empty space that occupies matter inside an atom all atoms everywhere. What if God actually is the empty space that fills most of the universe? I also wrote, life is everywhere on earth. 
Every possible place it can exist, it does. Why? A lichen grows in Antarctica in a place where it's impossible for life to be. It's 80 degrees below zero and so dry it hasn't rained for a thousand years. Yet it manages to cling to the underside of rocks, drawing its moisture and life from the rocks. New species are discovered at the bottom of the ocean where no plant life could possibly exist because there's no sunlight for photosynthesis. Yet tube-like plants do exist, miles down at the bottom of the ocean in total darkness, surviving by sucking energy from subterranean volcanic vents. To ask the question, does life exist elsewhere in the universe, is a little like asking, is there gambling in Las Vegas? There are infinite numbers of permutations possible within infinite levels of existence. Planet Earth is just one of the baseball games going on in space-time. As the game of the universe gets played out via the creation matrix, the game on planet Earth evolves. Life gets added to the matrix. It is self-organizing and adds many new combinations, layers and nuances and flavors to its existence. Existence is good. Life eventually becomes aware of itself. This is good. It adds to the consciousness stuff of the universe. The Omega Point. The stuff of the universe has a creative tendency to organize itself and develop into greater and greater levels of complexity. Why? To add to the consciousness stuff of the universe. That's why. According to Jesuit priest, scientist, and author Pierre Teilhard de Chardin's Law of Complexity Consciousness states that this complexity is accompanied by a corresponding rise in consciousness. Teilhard writes, The living world is constituted by consciousness, clothed in flesh and bone. His idea was this. As living organisms increase the diversity and complexity of their nervous connections, it gives birth to new consciousness. Evolution is creative, driving toward greater complexity and consciousness. Teilhard describes it as a crystallization of energy, a glow rippled outward from the first spark of conscious reflection. The point of ignition grows larger. The fire spreads in ever-widening circles till the whole planet is covered with incandescence. Teilhard's major thesis was that the mind goes through an evolutionary process of development until it reaches a level he called the omega point, the discovery of its own evolution. At this point, the entire human species has the potential to become enlightened all at once. This occurs within the collective soul of humanity as it achieves a critical mass of awareness. Consciousness rises to an evolutionary point where we all go online, so to speak, and we self-evolve into a new enlightened species. Which leads me to the point of all this and why I told you my personal story. Consciousness is the prize, the reason for the universe to play the game, to evolve and experience itself. The resulting increase in consciousness is like a process of fusion. You end up with more than what you started with. Consciousness is the food of God, the point of playing out the game of existence. To be and to experience being becomes its own purpose. It's the milk of existence. To evolve into new forms and experience it. To create and destroy and experience it, and so on and so on, as the game of the universe continually expands and evolves. Matter and energy and consciousness interconnected in the web of existence for its own ultimate purpose, being. This realization was the turning point in my life. The idea that just being alive was the point of it all. Existence is its own reward. That within our own eternal inner universe, the experiencing of aliveness brings you closer to the source of your being, which is the same as the source in the universe. 
the experience of which not only makes you more than you are, it makes the universe more of what it is. Wow, what a rush. I spoke earlier of an important role that you have in all this, which I'd like to address with you now. I'm certain you've heard or read reports of near-death experiences. People who clinically die yet are brought back to life. For them, the experience is transformational. When they return to life, they're literally born again and go about the business of living with a different perspective. They recognize the sacredness and importance of life, yet are totally unafraid of death and dying. They're more centered and energized about living. Relationships, love, and the joy of real moments become their focus. They're more connected with the experience of being alive. Careers, money, ego fulfillment activities become much less important. It's about being alive. And that's the point. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. What matters is that you live, that you add your drop of existence to the consciousness stuff of the universe. That's the underlying mission for all of planet Earth and its occupants. And there's something more. As humans evolve into more complex, higher consciousness beings, we'll awaken from our sleep. Teilhard's omega point will be reached when enough self-realized human beings go online and critical mass is achieved. Our collective soul achieving consciousness fusion and unfolding our destiny an enlightened race of beings. Who will lead the way? A paradigm shift for you. We are an oscillating field of energy operating within larger fields of energy. Our brains respond well to the rhythm of sounds, pulsations of light, and the frequency of colors. By understanding how to manipulate the energy within our brains, we can transcend to a higher level of consciousness and ultimately evolve the consciousness of the entire planet. On this higher plane, you're able to tap into new sources of knowledge that were previously beyond your reach and discover your true self, your authentic soul, your essence. This shift can happen suddenly, even though it may take time to work up to it. It all may seem new to you, yet strangely familiar with a knowing confidence that it was part of you all along. This new knowing is a paradigm shift that gives you a new way of thinking about old problems and old situations. Or perhaps it will create a restless feeling that the comfortable yet mundane lifestyle that you're living suddenly won't do anymore. A paradigm reveals a framework of thought or reality that was always present but never understood. A paradigm shift occurred when the flat world was discovered to be round, when the sun rather than the earth was discovered to be the central body of our solar system. These paradigm shifts illustrate a major tenet of their acceptance. One cannot embrace the new paradigm without letting go of the old. You don't figure it out step by step, rather it suddenly seems to happen all at once. This is a change that finds you, recurring in both the mind and the heart. More than 200 years ago, Sir Isaac Newton portrayed the universe and everything in it as operating on the same principles as a mechanical clock which could be broken down into its elements to understand the inner workings. Now science is showing this is not to be true. In fact, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Even more surprising is that these wholes are related to an even larger whole through intricate relationships that are constantly in flux. It is these relationships that determine the structure and your experience of the universe. Process is the language of the universe. Process is everything. Quantum physics is showing us that solid objects really aren't solid. They're patterns of energy. What was once labeled as a fear is no longer seen as a block in the mind, but a process of habit that can be modified. Same too with a cancerous tumor. It's a process of a growing malignancy that can be stopped and reverted. We only need to learn how. 
Rather than seeing the object, the fear, or the tumor as fixed elements, each is recreating itself every moment and thus has the potential for being changed, reordered, or transformed. The nature of the mind is process. Like a dance of neurons branching out and connecting through the dendrites, firing synapses like fireworks across an inner sky that ride on brain waves rippling through the left and right brain. We're not here for survival. We're here for transcendence. When the brain's waves are synchronized into patterns and frequencies that model desired states of consciousness, you have the ability to provoke your brain into a higher order and evolve your consciousness. We have learned that the brain, mind, and the energies of consciousness can be manipulated using tools like the Zygon technology. We can direct sound to create transcendent states that create that eternal moment and allow access to higher states of consciousness. By using music and sound frequencies placed in the precise combinations, we can create a new mind, integrating you into a state of whole brain awareness optimal states for learning and rescripting your subconscious. It is a process. Trust it and follow your personal growth. Make it an experience in being and see where it leads you. Suspend your judgments to allow you to approach uncertainty with confidence. Remember to think mystery, not mastery. Think progress, not perfection. Go for a direction not a destination. Allow it to find you. As you walk the path of a human being, you'll learn to trust your intuition to take you further and faster than analytical thinking alone allows. You'll be able to still your left brain side and call on the void to create a mental space for accessing new ideas. You'll discover how to look for synchronicity and rely on it as an instrument of the universe to guide you in the absence of concrete evidence that you're on the right path. You'll learn how to use meditation as a mechanism to still your mind, to experience a new dimension of being where time has no hold over you. The purpose of the Zygon technology and the tools we develop for mind warriors is to shift the energy within your mind to achieve a higher order of being. It's all designed for direct experience, since only that which can be felt firsthand can actually change you. The transformation process is more to be experienced than studied. This program and others involving the Zygon technology are offered as agents of change. The goal of it all is to help you discover your own power within, to bring about the change on an individual level and then a planetary level. By applying this knowledge, you'll discover an amazing connectedness and cultivate an openness to new, perhaps even strange, and deeper possibilities for your life than you ever thought possible. Although evolution can be a slow process with as many reversals and setbacks, as we approach the omega point and increase our consciousness energy, adding it to the collective soul of humanity, the earth gets a new skin. You're an important part of this grand plan, the great human adventure. It is the way of a mind warrior.